everyone and welcome once again to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Play more Discord. <laughs> oh no. And awesome reviewer Silver Quill. Becca Silver Ranger, go! <laughs> <laughs> Still not getting over his Super Sentai face with power ponies. Um, <laughs> and today we are reviewing uh, the Friends Forever issue number two, starring Discord and the CMCs. Written by Jeremy Whitley with art by Tony Flakes and colors by Lauren Perry. Oh my god, this is like a, this is like having a terrible marathon through uh, spiky roads and fire, flame, and uh, a lot of manure to finally get to the end goal. And somebody giving you the best crispest bottle of fresh water you could ever imagine. Because going from issue number one to issue number two, it's like going from night to day. Wow, this issue. Uh, shall I go with the synopsis and then we give our thoughts on it? Yep. yep. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, uh, in this comic, we have the Cutie Mark Crusaders, like always, looking for their Cutie Marks. They have run out of ideas, and they don't know what to do next. And as, t- as it turns out, Discord happens to be prancing by their uh, clubhouse. So they say, hey, you know what? Maybe you could ask Discord for ideas. He seems to be the creative type. What follows is a lot of hijinks, uh, at which even more creative... Ending in a rather interesting uh, moral and an even uh, and a very touching conclusion, true, true. Uh, where everybody ends up learning a lesson, both the CMCs and Discord himself. So, if you want to know more about the comic um, without getting more spoilers, you should go and read it because, in my own humble opinion, it's pretty good. But from now on, we're going to go hip deep into spoilers, and right away we're going to start with the thoughts, and then we're going to go with uh, an analysis of the entire comic. Meaning we're going to be here until tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Norman, but you're going to have to edit 24 hours worth of podcast. <laughs> Control all delete. <laughs> <laughs> no, my ideas. But he wants anyway. to reset the world. <laughs> we're not ghosting the press, show on us. Don't press the history dacing button. <laughs> what does this button do? <laughs> delete but yeah so like always let's start uh, inverted alphabetical order Silver goes first then Norman and then me so guys what did you think of this comic well overall I enjoyed it there's however I'm not sure I'm gonna gush about it as much as others um how to describe you're right after after the disappointment of issue number one of Friends Forever this felt more on track this was more focused on the characters we know and enjoy it's Develop it fleshes them out, and what I've come to appreciate from the Friends Forever line is that when you take two characters who seemingly would never interact, would have no reason to, and change it up, suddenly you get these new, fresh stories that feel really interesting, and it's fun to see how the characters play off one another. Uh, we're going to have even uh, better matchups down the line. But the one thing about this that I might not praise as much as uh, other fans is that as discord is taking the crusaders through multiple alternate realities or you know just doing his voodoo there's a lot of pop culture references and they're fun and they make me laugh uh but later comics made me realize hey maybe we're being a little too overt with the pop culture references in discord <laughs> that he he's becoming just a reference box for pop culture rather than this quirky, chaotic character. Case in point, issue number 24 of the main series. Hmm. Yes, that's that's one I'm definitely thinking of. uh, And it might continue. So it's fun, but it's also a trend I'm wary of. I don't know. When I started reading this comic, I enjoyed it because, well, the lettering is back to normal. Yay! The artwork is... Different, but in a good kind of different. Um, Artist Tony Fleece really knows how to draw ponies. Um, Some of his cover book is really awesome. And it shows in this comic here. And with other things inside here, with how chaotic the comic is, it's really cool. This... Oh my gosh. Uh, Probably... Okay, because we're coming right after the issue number one of Friends Forever. Perhaps we have the negativity classes on so 
anything, anything that is slightly better than that is going to be absolutely spectacular. And yeah, I will agree that right after that comic, anything else will look great. And obviously, this comic looks really good. And I, I could argue some people uh, would say, "Oh yeah, well, you were kind of like." waiting for something that was actually great. So you're seeing it with the, oh my god, give me something good, glasses, and uh, Indian is actually not all that spectacular, like Silver said, an excess of pop culture references. But I am the kind of guy that likes that kind of stuff, to the uh, to the exhaustion of the, uh, of the resource. And to me, this comic is just absolutely perfect. Like, to me, the only flaw this comic has is the fact that it's the number two of the series instead of being the number one. Like, uh, if I were to introduce people to the Friends Forever series, I would skip issue number one and go right away with uh, issue number two and say, this, read this one. But this is number two, where's number You don't want number one. Read number two. <laughs> it is a perfect introduction because you have the characters uh, interacting with each other. They, um, they work off each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. And the conclusion reaches with uh, both of them reaching a, a, a moral, learning something, learning a lesson that works for them really well. Would you say this comic is the bomb? <laughs> I will. Oh, no. Here we go. Yeah, I will say it is the bomb. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> the soundboard. Doom. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, this is uh, this is a fantastic comic that I reread every now and then. Not just because I love the way that Tony Flix draws Discord. Um, uh, he he is the guy behind the the Fluttershy Micro, and I always said that the Fluttershy Micro had a fantastic art style, and I really like the way it looked. This comic looks gorgeous, and it's even more beautiful when it comes to the story. But right now, that will be for the uh, for talking about the comic panel by panel. Or page by page, hopefully. I don't want to. Gr- uh, I don't want to <laughs> meddle too much with this one. So let's go for it. True, true. Um, so yeah, like I said, we start with the CMCs in their in their uh, clubhouse, trying to figure out what to do next, and going after every single fail attempt at getting their cutie marks in the past week or so. Like standard comedian, fade, fail, uh, parkour. They were trying parkour. <laughs> On Toilet Sparkle's library, of all things. <laughs> failed. <laughs> uh, falconry failed as well. I wasn't expecting them to try Falconry. And, should've, of should've course... Fluttershy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they, uh, uh, Fluttershy would have ended up failing that one as well. I don't know. I don't see her dealing with the Falcon. Oh, no. Fluttershy will do it, man. <laughs> uh, see, the, the Falcon will, will land on her arm and give her a nuzzle, and she won't even have to say anything. <laughs> Such is the Why? power because, of the Fluttershy. Yes. Because she has the stare. Oh, jeez. But she's she's good against uh, it's good against birds. <laughs> <laughs> but as they are trying to discuss what to do next, Discord passes by uh, their clubhouse as he starts changing the colors of the apples. Like, okay, Discord, what are you doing? Changing the colors of the apples? What are you? Oh, you're not changing the colors, you're changing the flavors. That's not okay. good. That I I'm not sure how to feel about that, but apparently he has the permission of Applejack to do that. Really? Yeah. Or Celestia. It, <laughs> yeah. Uh no wait, no, you're right. Uh it is Celestia. It says here, our benevolent Princess Celestia has given me a list of past transgressions for which I am compensating. Applejack and, and, and brainwashing this Applejack is a wait, wait. What? One of them. Yeah, she brainwashed Applejack, remember? Yeah. They are all uh, gray and liar. Yeah, I'm really? just yeah. thinking, uh, how would this be good for sales and uh, carry well, on? Well, imagine, well, it's something, it, I guess what he's doing is something similar to what Willy Wonka was doing in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He's like trying to come up with different ways to sell the same product. So he's selling, he's making different flavored apples and each one of the main CMCs gives an idea. It's like habanero peppers, sweet potatoes, and apple pie. <laughs> because Sweetie Belle is the dumb of the... Hey, hey, she's not dumb. She's but always she's, the dumb one. She's unimaginative. Uh, she's not really... And that's actually very true to her in this show. She's not one of the most inventive types. She's more of the practical, 
in the moment uh, mm. ponies. Well, when she finally catches on, I'm thinking yeah. of uh, the Stairmaster. Although, to be honest, Discord's uh, apples remind me more of the Harry treats in Harry Potter. Oh, God. Which immediately makes me wary that somewhere in that orchard there is a vomit-flavored apple. <laughs> oh, my God. And an earwax flavor. Oh, uh, moving on. I was I was thinking about the earwax one. Oh, gil. okay, yeah. I don't want to eat those apples now. Uh, hopefully I they I, have. I don't blame Dumbledore for steering clear of that candy line. <laughs> no wonder. Oh my god. But yeah, as <laughs> uh, so as they see Discord uh, changing up the apples and all that, Apple Bloom has an idea. And she's like, hey, 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 why don't we ask Discord to come up with things to do uh, for getting our cutie marks? And Discord is already rubbing, rubbing his hands, hala Mr. Burns, and he's going, this is going to be good. <laughs> and I love how when they turn to him, he's just the, uh, uh, pl- 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 plucking the petals out of a uh, daisy. daisy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I look so innocent and sweet. I am adorable, aren't I? <laughs> 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 Got to Discord inside the CMC clubhouse, and he does. He 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 looks even 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 more dorky. Yeah. Like how can he fit in there? And of course, they start trying out new uh, different things. And I have no idea how we can tackle each one of these because it's like, yay, they try one thing to the next one. Yay, they try one thing. Snap to the next one. Snap to the next one for like the entire comic. And in each one yeah. of them, they try a, a completely different. Um, uh, Different proficiency. And I applaud the comic for its creativity in that right away they don't start with the pop culture references. Those come later on. Mm-hmm. And when things, when Discord don't have any ideas left. I, but I have to say, I have to say, Sweetie Bell here looks so cute. Uh, I'm going to have to put you down for that. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, good. Norman is gone. We can just review the comic between the both of us. Oh, <laughs> There was oh, only the a scatroon. <laughs> you shot me. Why did you shoot me in the arm? <laughs> <laughs> Pop uh, culture references. They are seeping yeah. into this co- into this review. Oh no, it's out of oh, control. Yes. <laughs> so Although, anyway, I, sorry? actually, I do kind of wonder if Scootaloo's con- uh, costume in the uh, figure skating isn't a reference to ke- to uh, the Hunger Games. No, she's this got, was before. Uh, she's got a flame costume. No, you know what? I will agree with Silver. I think it might be because this is right after the the the, the second Hunger Games movie came out. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Not even the second. Like I think it was right after the. Uh, well, I'm not sure when did the Hunger Games. Do you guys Games... remember that one Will Ferrell movie that he did? It was oh. about ice skating. Blaze, Blaze of, of Glory. Or so? Blaze of yeah, Glory. Something like that. Yeah. It's something similar to this that I can see here. And it fits perfectly well with Scootaloo. <laughs> now, I, I do have to call a little bit of shenanigans. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how seriously to take this. People are saying, oh, it wasn't like that in the TV show. Okay, comics are their own continuity world in my mind. Mm-hmm. But Scootaloo's shown she's kind of the aerobatic and the dancer of the troop. Mm-hmm. Here she is, but it looks like Sweetie Belle's the more graceful in this case. And I will say to Apple Bloom, when it looks like your friend is about to plow into you and there's going to be an uh, impact, do not hold a blade right next to your head. <laughs> yeah, uh, not very smart move right there, Apple Bloom. Cutie Mark Crusader Darwin Awards. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, I guess, I guess Scootaloo is good with uh, on on the wheels, but maybe when they put ice skates on her, she's not. All that good? Mm. I'm not sure. Well, uh, also, I should I should call this out because I saw it and it's kind of weird for me. Um, the three Discord judges, they look like they have been taken directly from the actual TV show. <laughs> like uh, that that one panel. Remember from the episode mm-hmm, Keep mm-hmm. Calm and Flat Run? Yeah. Oh, okay. Although I, f- I feel really bad calling Tony Flix on this because as uh, me being someone who has... Uh, has to draw comics from uh, the, the ground up, like sketching, inking, and all that. I can totally understand when you are like so tired and so overworked that you are like, I'm going to take just a panel from the TV show. I can work off of that. So yeah, I can totally understand the decision of, of uh, doing it like that. Yeah. It's Besides, cool, I love the rating system. Pickle at 
pie. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, after this blunder of a mishap, we move on to Discord's next attempt at the CMC's getting the critic mark. Football. Mm-hmm. Or uh, they're, rugby. They sneak, in, they sneak into a 1970s sports movie. <laughs> Which, I, and I have to say, Discord's cheating right off the bat. It's five on three. Mm. <laughs> Not yeah, only that's, that's what you... One of your opponents is the Thunder... A uh, gremlin from Rainbow Dash's Micro mm-hmm. and a bear. <laughs> you are making children play against a bear. Discord, <laughs> you are trying to kill these ch- films. Uh, actually, you know what? I wouldn't be so worried about the bear as I should be worried about Angel being in the other team. Oh God, this is so unfair. I would be, I would be so thrilled. Flying tackle. He doesn't have the ball. Who cares? <laughs> no, they actually, they do do a flying tackle on him while cutting the ball, and the little creature just runs away, and he looks so happy. <laughs> just, just look at him. He's like, "Yay! I'm trolling you." Uh, I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> what is your reward? Getting inside the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, uh, fail at that again. And uh, funny enough, Spike and Angel get kicked out of the bubble thing, whatever. And that's when Spike realizes that this is a weird thing that's going on, and they should warn Twilight. Mm-hmm. And uh, kudos to Spike for calling Twilight on this one. Although, does that mean he was brainwashed while playing the football game? I think he was in swept into the moment kind of deal. Who knows? That's, uh, that's one heck of a moment. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he was really enjoying himself. Maybe he thought, maybe he was playing Madden, and he was so <laughs> into the game that he forgot when he got uh, sucked inside well, the actual game. James, <laughs> it is EA Sports is in the game. Norman, why don't you just uh, Silver? Please give me the boo. <laughs> no, 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 the boo, just... the boo. <laughs> Thank you. Well, not every joke flies. <laughs> well, it's just it's just EA Sports. <laughs> I think it's run its course. <laughs> now, I think Spike was just happy to finally be winning at something for a change. Mm-hmm. Uh, these jokes are on par with the ones in the comic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next uh, next uh, one, they try Lion Taming. And uh, not continuity right there. Uh, you fan of that, Silver. They already <laughs> tried Lion Taming. Hmm. And this goes surprise. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is this guy yeah. trying to kill them or something? Because, like, hmm. I, I think given the current trend, yeah, there's a homicidal side to this guy. <laughs> you don't say. Do you want to come into my band? I have some candy. <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay. Oh, gosh. But, Cutie yeah, Crusaders uh, need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. I am, I am an adult. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Spike brings Twilight, Twilight brings Big Rarity, then Rainbow Dash, Protoss High. Pinky and finally Applejack. Who, uh, Applejack? How can how did did it take you so long to notice that your house was the host of a giant bubble that is expanding all over Ponyville? What? So, um, and the next one they try. Uh, what is this? Uh, tight, tight, tight rope. Yeah, tight, tight rope walking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Funny not working. Try. Next, they oh, done it before. Yeah, they done it before. So, yeah, this guy is trying to kill them. And also, firefighting? They done it before? <laughs> they done that before. I love I love the way that he whispers that uh, these little ponies are starting to get on my nerves. Do you want crazy? Yeah. And then <laughs> Firefighters. That, yeah, done that before. <laughs> oh, no, where are we giving up? Very quickly, I'm Lord of Chaos, the king of the unexpected. And, yep, we're going to Daytona. Yay. <laughs> 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 Game over, <laughs> yeah. Although they're very poorly constructed cards, Discord needs to work on quality control. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, they are poorly constructed, but I think they meet with the NASCAR uh, regulation. <laughs> <laughs> they're good enough for NASCAR. They're good enough. They're good for crashing, isn't that what NASCAR is all about? Oh, yeah, crashing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, they uh they go from firefighting to NASCAR and then finally and that's when the pop culture references start coming in and they come in at full force. Yeah. I mean first one is as subtle as a sledgehammer to the face. <laughs> uh... oh, but it but you get to see Discord dressed up as Q. <laughs> that's that's 
That is why I love this. It's like, yeah, let's go ahead with it. Oh my god, is this Cortas Q? That is fantastic. Uh, and I love how he nods at it. Hmm, this one seems kind of familiar. Oh well. <laughs> By the way, the Klingons are cats. <laughs> <laughs> and they have cats, cards of prey, apparently. <laughs> well, they just want to—they just want to spend their yarn. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, anywho, but, yeah. next one. I don't—I don't know if the next one is a Power Rangers parody or a Voltron parody or a. It looks like a Power Rangers parody or Sentai parody. Actually, it's my—it's my favorite pop culture of the entire comic. Same here. Uh, Same where, here. Where they're all declaring, "Ready, ready, ready," and then, "Hey, we weren't ready." <laughs> they say to J- Godzilla Gummy. <laughs> Which, Gummy isn't Zilla? It, God Gummy? Isn't it, isn't it what would happen if those Sentai shows were realistic? Oh, God. You know, is that, aha, we are all making our, our silly poses and let's move our arms and legs in unison. And in the time that you're preparing, the monster has already tore apart one of your arms and <laughs> eating at the power core. And it's like tearing apart the cork, the cockpit and like, oh, God, no, it's killing us. We shouldn't have messed up with all these poses and silly actions. <laughs> this isn't working. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And right, right after is that... Uh, even more and more pop culture references, like pirates, uh, superheroes, with a cameo of Sweetie Bot. Really? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I did that for the show. <laughs> it I is Sweetie teach you Bot. you too, Fermi. <laughs> <laughs> Sad face has to hug. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know what the third one is. I think it's a Jan, uh, Jan Jackson O movie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> French. I love the way that Scootaloo looks. <laughs> uh, poor Sweetie Bell. She broke her tongue. Oh, oh man. I love that. Um, and Apple Bloom's rocking that stash. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. And that were it. Uh, lethal weapon on the next one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> or, or something. And this is, the, this is the best switch from one to another. From Lord of the Rings to playing Dungeons and Dragons in the basement. <laughs> Oobliets and ogres, get it right. <laughs> was this the same game that um, Shining Armor played? Yeah. According to the to the figurines and the way that it's played out, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he, okay, after this, here comes the most touching part because Discord doesn't want to give up. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah, this... Uh, along with the pop culture references and its endless imagination, this is my favorite part of the entire comic. Yeah. Because... Oh my gosh, this 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 yeah. kills me. Uh, any of you, either of you guys, you go ahead first because yeah. I uh, I have to collect my thoughts on yeah, this one. I want to go first because this this really means a lot because from the beginning we can tell that Discord wanted to cause a lot of chaos, cause a lot of harm. Just just go all out trolling these ponies because. You like in the very beginning was about ice skating. Okay, first it was n- nothing so serious, and then it was tightrope walking, and then it was football, and then it was firefighting, and then it was ships. Then everything that Discord did or help the CMC to get their cutie mark is something really dangerous, and to a point where Discord says. I am going to help you get your cutie mark no matter what, because right now he's not even trying to kill them; he's just trying to get the cutie marks now. And in the end, Sweetie Belle just says, um, excuse me, Mrs. Discord, I, I know, I just wanted to take a second to thank you, just because that line there is just so touching, because Discord is taking time out of his day to help the CMCs, while the other adult ponies didn't give them that much time. And you know what? That means a lot. And that's just awesome of them. And their relationship with this and Discord being the lot of chaos, not having friends, suddenly getting three more friends and being an ordinary member of, of the CMCs. That's so cool. That's so awesome. And with that, yeah, they became friends. And then Celestia pops in. <laughs> well, I enjoy it too. I mean, the, this is this is back to that strength of the Friends Forever line, fighting that that connection between characters you don't normally associate Mm -hmm. not having your cutie marks is feeling like you're not part of the group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, diamond tiara has used that to sort of, to try and isolate them multiple times. So yeah, I can see how 
they would find a connection with Discord who doesn't fit in anywhere. He is literally a composite of multiple creatures, not any one thing. Now, I will say I think his homicidal tendencies are shining through <laughs> as he's trying to help them. I think he needs more therapy on that score. Mm-hmm. Also, I... if we're... If we have to rib Celestia, way to go, sending a homicidal draconicus on little foals. God. <laughs> People seem to think I, I still hate Celestia. I do I, not. I, I, I'm pretty sure. No, I don't think you hate Celestia. Uh, I can see how some people might say that, but no, nah, I don't think you do. <laughs> oh, I'm glad because I don't. No, oh, come on. But, yeah, I... Okay. You guys know that I am a big fan of... Uh, redeeming characters like Trixie, Babsid, uh, any uh, any character that has uh, come through the show that used to be or proved to be a villain, mm-hmm. and uh, then they stopped being uh, part of the bad guys and they started to like wanting to get better. Uh, Discord is my favorite of that kind because he uh, uh, the the way he looks, he looks like a bad guy. He looks like a monster. He looks like a creature that shouldn't belong there. Like. Even uh, I'm pretty sure even he himself, the way that he might feel is that uh, uh, he doesn't, he's not supposed to be part of the good guys. However, <laughs> the CMCs don't see that, and that's what I like about the uh, the last dialogue that they have right there between Suitable and Discord. I love the way Suitable addresses Discord directly. That um, I have been saying the entire comic that she, that Suitable is dumb. She's not very creative, not very imaginative, but she knows how to be honest, and uh, she knows how to say things. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That 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 moment between Discord and Suitable is just priceless, and it only gets better when uh, they accept him as uh, part of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Because yeah, why wouldn't Discord be part of them? He doesn't have a Cutie Mark. He's perfect to join the club. <laughs> Honorary member of the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and it's it's such a pretty moment. Mm-hmm. It's such a good moment to think about how Discord was all the way back in season in season two, and uh, how easily uh, was uh, uh, for him to start like stop acting like a jerk or stop acting like a uh, uh, like a villain. He's because Discord was never a no, was never truly a bad guy. When you think about it, he just wanted to have fun. He has been a thousand years in prison in a in a statue. Why wouldn't he want to have some fun? I don't think he ever wanted to harm anybody. He just wanted to have a good time. So I never saw Discord as a bad guy, and I am so happy to see that they are actually doing something else with uh, with him in the in the comics. To me, that final interaction with uh, between Discord and the CMC, that dialogue that he has with them, is. It's spot on, and the panel where uh, the panels where Apple Bloom, Suitable, and Scootaloo uh, uh, jump on his arms and hug him is just adorable. I can't yeah. uh, too much, Duh. too much. <laughs> but oh god, it's an overload of dog. But it is great, and I I love the I love the fact that both the CMC learn that they might not get their cutie marks today, but they can try another day, and that. Uh, Discord learns that it can feel really good to do things for others mm-hmm. because that is actually what you what you were saying right there Norman is that he forgets to stop uh, he forgets about spray, uh, spreading chaos and he focuses on trying to help them mm-hmm. it's true, kind true. of weird the way that it shifts uh it, it sh- he shifts focus goes from one thing to another yeah and like i've been saying with all the comics there's always this lesson that needs to be learned or lesson that's being taught to us in the background like from the f- micro series to the Friends Forever series. That's how I view this comics as. The main line is just um, stories adventures, cool things and whatnot. but for this side stories it's usually um, lessons to be learned and whatnot. and starting from the issue, well, technically it was Dairy number one but it was a bad one. I, I like to say issue two starts started strong. Although this comic does not speak well to, for Twilight's powers of observation. <laughs> she gives Discord a minor chewing out for endangering Ponyville with his unreality bubble, walks away, and apparently doesn't turn around to see Celestia appear in all her glory, <laughs> shining like the sun. 
I mean, seriously, that backdrop, all you need is a pair of spotlights going overhead saying, here's Celestia. Directed by J. Directed by J.J. Abrams? No. Uh, <laughs> lens flare, lens flare, lens, lens flare. Oh, boy. Lens flare, lens flare, what are you going to do? Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> no, um, I, I, well, the way that I see Celestia's in- introduction, it is, if you, if you notice, all the background disappears, that is just bright and colorful, and it's like with a, uh, like with a solar flare behind it, and it continues throughout the rest of the comic. Something tells me that Celestia is not actually there. She's just presenting to Discord in a, I don't know, kind of a vision? Or parallel um, universe, or parallel dimension, something like that. I am the ghost of ponies awesome! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just me a way of uh, trying to justify the way that Twilight so happily, she just turns around and with a lot of dignity walks away with her wings fully extended. So, yeah, she's uh, like, I, I am ignoring my, my former mentor. I don't need her anymore. I have wings. <laughs> but anywho, James, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Um, this, I think, if you are a fan of Discord, if you are a fan of the CMCs, and if you are the kind of person that really enjoys pop culture references mixed with some really original stuff, kind of like Aladdin, uh, this is the perfect comic for you. Uh, to me, it doesn't uh, overload the uh, it doesn't overload the viewer, the reader with uh, as many pop culture references as I originally thought. Like I, I didn't realize that the pop culture re- uh, references start with uh, the Star Trek bit, and they continue almost all the way throughout the to, towards the end of the comic. Um, but yeah, it it's a perfect comic for those of you who enjoy. Um, Discord as EMC and a good chunk of creativity. That is, that and the final dialogue between Discord and the Cutie Mark Crusaders are the best parts of this comic. True, and true. on the on the worst part, the only negative aspect that I get of this comic is that it's the second issue of the Friends Forever <laughs> comics instead of the first one. If they started with this, oh, it would have been amazing. But alas, they didn't. Yeah. What can you do? True that, true that. Although if you also if you also set people up with such a fun and enjoyable comic in issue number one, how much harder is issue number two going to hit them? Oh yeah, that well, is that, that, is, true. That, that, that is true. Perhaps it's the problem of maybe setting the bar way too high, so it is difficult to put it on the same level of every, as everything else. Uh, but Although, uh, oh well. Uh, all, all I have right now are images of Celestia appearing before Discord and saying, "You will haunt three fillies." Okay, no. Don't you mean be, ha- be haunted by three fillies? You heard what I said. <laughs> but but uh, I don't know. I don't know. My, my thoughts. <laughs> my thoughts on the comic is I like it. The art is awesome. The writing is good. And lessons. The lesson in this one is I love it. I love it. Especially that last moment, like you said, James. Sweetie Bell, Discord huggings, oh, heart can't take it anymore. Too much, too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> how dear me. But anywho, uh, I, I think everyone likes it, right? Well, we didn't hear Silver Silver's uh, final thoughts. Oh. I went the complete opposite and didn't go the uh, inverted alphabetical order. Oh my. So uh, we're gonna go alphabetical order proper this time. <laughs> I think. But Silver, go ahead, dude. Uh, go ahead. Well, now, like uh, like Discord, I know what it's like to be ostracized and forgotten. <laughs> oh, the shame. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, thoughts are pretty consistent through this. It's fun. It's enjoyable. And when you're done with the story, you look back and say, wow, there was a lot of pop culture. But the ending, the these comics seem to really deliver the heavy hitting stuff at the end, which is what you should do in a story. Uh, so fun, le- fun, lightheartedness leading up to a more heart pulling moment, and I think it works well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I won't say it's not my favorite Friends Forever. We're we're coming up on number two of that score, but it is an enjoyable read, and I'd recommend it to anyone, especially as an introduction to the Friends Forever line. Oh yeah, way better than the one uh, with Pinkie Pie and Applejack. Yeah. Ah, well, well, I am so happy that uh, the final conclusion is that awesome comic, everybody liked it. Let's move on to the next one, right? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I have one one other observation. When we talked uh-huh. about the, the improved artwork, and this was a change, 
uh, the artists did the um, did the same artwork for the Fluttershy micro, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's the same artist, Tony Flakes. Tony Flakes yeah. And vast improvement over the first issue of Friends Forever. A lot of that has to do with black lines for the mm -hmm. characters, which is kind of funny. The weaker artwork issues of both the main series and all the the, the smaller ones. It always seems like when they're trying to mimic the pastel outlines of the show, it doesn't work because they, they become sort of weaker. The, they don't stand out as well. But here, as and as with uh, Andy Price's work, the black lines really make the characters distinct and make them stand out and more lively. Hmm. And it's a very strange well, thing. It's It's almost ironic. By trying to imitate the show, they end up defeating the comic. Well, you know, that's, uh, but that's something that happens when you have a medium like the comic books. Uh, like, comic books are supposed to have very heavy inks. They are supposed to have that, uh, that black outline. Because that's what comic books are. It's very difficult to, uh, to recreate that same colored, uh, outline thing that they have in the show because they're two completely separate mediums. Like I'm pretty sure that the colored outlines work great in motion, but when they are static, they might look very awkward. Probably. I, I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to think, is there a situation where um, colored lines or colored outlines could work? Hmm. Well, in the animated show, it does work really well. Uh, but that's movement. I'm talking about something static, like the comics. Something static. Yeah. Um, perhaps in a bigger illustrations with a bit more detail and, uh, not something that is supposed to be sequential and with the speech bubbles, perhaps that could work. Like in illustrated, illustrated comics, something like that. Mm, probably. But anywho, James, what's next week's review? Next week's review is going to be the Friends Forever issue number three, starring Princess Celestia and Spike, mm. uh, written by Ted Anderson and with art by Agnes uh, Garbowska. That one is going to be a doozy to review, I can tell you. Oh, yeah. It's a doozy of a doozy. Oh, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to it. That one is uh, because talking about fringe couples, fringe parents, that is a very fringe pairing, I can tell you. Ah, you're a Spilestia shipper. <laughs> no. Um, I, actually, funny enough, I only ship one, and it hasn't showed up in the comics yet. So. Oh, God. <laughs> you will know when it appears, if they ever make one. Uh, Very but, spy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not that one. Oh, shut up. Stop uh, trying to guess my favorite ship. Hey. Anyway, uh, I think we can call this one completed, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. yep. This, one actually, this one actually went by... Pretty quick, didn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching, for listening, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. This has been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzu. Play the smile song. And I'm Silver Quill. I gotta bounce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, See you guys next week. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye.